of the Live Rats. This time is Live Rats of Vancouver. I am yes, Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we are on the on the left coast again. We are indeed. When uh, when God shook Canada, all the nuts rolled west. Ain't it true? Yeah, that's pretty true. <laughs> um, today on the show, I thought we would do a little kind of fun uh, hot spot safety um, episode because, of course, you and I are both on the road on a, on a, on a regular yes. basis. You know, I fly from Toronto on, in the east side of Canada, or well, it's central Canada, not eastern Canada, central Canada, to yeah, humor our maritime catch. friends, I know. Good catch. And I fly to the west coast, to Vancouver, uh, although not quite the west coast because the Victoria people will be upset because it's yeah, not that far west. west enough, but... Anyway, so I'm doing, spending a lot of time in airports using Wi-Fi, and I thought, you know what, maybe it's time to look at hotspot safety. When That's you go and connect at a public place. It's a very good idea. Right. All right. Well, let's get into it. But uh, first, a message from our sponsor. Yes, and just, just quickly, that was, that was my cat, Kitka, just in case you were wondering. Yes, that's not Biff or Boo. That's not Biff or Boo. We really have to bribe her to get her up on the table. I know Biff and Boo, they, well, Biff anyways. He's a big star. He wants to be in every <laughs> shot. So. That's true. Anyways, All right. so maybe we'll see that's... Kika a little bit later on if, she's, if she'll humor us. Hopefully. All right. Well, first this message, and we'll be right back with Hotspot Safety. This is a pair of sneakers. They're worn and comfy. This is a Jack Russell Terrier. It likes shoes. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It can edit your screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. So I know you do a lot of uh, travel and uh, you, you use your MacBook Pro, I guess, to connect to uh, wireless hotspots around the world. I do. So uh, do you ever get concerned about the security in public places? I do, for uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, I know you have one trick that you're going to show us uh, about access points, rogue access points, mm -hmm. and various things like that. But the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is we, we've talked about wireless encryption in the past where you encrypt the settings on your access point so that other people can't get on. What people don't realize necessarily is that even if it is encrypted and you, you go into a hotspot and they give you a key, uh, they're giving other people the key too, so that as soon as everyone has that key, anyone that's on that access point mm -hmm. can theoretically sniff other people's traffic on that access point. So you Sniffing. sniff, yeah. So it's and there there are tools out there that bad guys can use, right? Or just curious people can use right. that will read all the traffic that's going on throughout that network. Let's uh, let's uh, we're going to go there in a second. Let's just dumb it down for yeah. a second, right? For the the grandmas out there mm. and the uh, why should I say that? we have grandma geeks who are experts. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying stepping gingerly today. Make sure they don't insult everybody. Last time I said we have grandmas, they're like, I'm a grandma geek and I know stuff. Mm -hmm. The people that are new to the business, uh, new to uh, technology. People that aren't as familiar with this topic. Thank you. <laughs> so you have a laptop, and most mm -hmm. laptops today come with a wireless antenna mm -hmm. that allows you to connect uh, wirelessly to what are called access points or little devices that can share the internet across mm -hmm. the air up to a range of about 250, 300 feet. Yes. Right, so you can go to an airport and connect there. Maybe you ha might have one of these uh, access points at home. Of course, some people have them in the office. Certainly you do at uh, the Lab with Leo when you work there at Greedy, Pro Greedy Productions. Yes. Um, so the problem is, is you're transmitting stuff out of your machine, and it's going out over the air between, you know, potentially in the path of somebody else who mm -hmm. has an antenna that can, can sniff out that data, mm -hmm. right, and steal or at least uh, check out what you're up to. What's going on? The cat going crazy over there? Oh, she found the stash of treats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so um, so that's to bring everybody who may not be familiar with wireless up to date. So mm -hmm. the concern. So you were saying then there are bad guys out there that have yes. the tools to be able to pluck that stuff out of the air, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Is essentially when you're sending traffic back and forth from this wireless computer to the access point, it's basically going back and forth in the raw. Mm -hmm. So anybody can that has a wireless receiver can theoretically access those and say, um, okay, yes, this is, uh, this is a packet. It's not mine, mm -hmm. theoretically, but I can read it. Right. It's kind of um, like sending a postcard, right? You know, the postman mm -hmm. can read your personal thoughts because there's nothing protecting that message. Yeah, it's on the postcard for sure. Right, right. So what you're doing when you're encrypting the traffic is you're basically putting an envelope around it 
and saying, okay, this is protected, you can't read this if right. you don't know how to get into this envelope. Right. And uh, when everyone has the same key, it's essentially wrapping one big envelope around all of the information inside that envelope, inside that letter. Right. So my letter is in there, your letter is in there, but it's one big envelope, envelope. protecting all of us. Right. So you're at Starbucks and it's all encrypted, it means that we're all together. But right. if we're all in it together and he's not a good guy, then he can get at my stuff. Yes, bad people can go to Starbucks too. Right. So let's talk a little bit about sort of one of the ways uh, that you should, you know, fundamentally, of course, if you're doing banking or anything like that in a public place, you're going to have an encrypted, you're going to have a, um, a secure link between you and the bank. Right. So that's innately secure anyway. Mm -hmm. But anything else, you're sending form information out to the web, you're sending your email across this wireless mm -hmm. link, people can get access to that. Right. And that may not be preferable. There'll be a spot on your browser that will have something like a little lock that will show you whether or not it's uh, secure. Uh, you can look in the browser uh, URL bar as well. And some Most of the time it'll say HTTP, but when you go to a secure site, sometimes it'll say HTTPS. Um, so there, there are little clues that will indicate whether or not it is secured at the browser end or not. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, I think uh, email, all of that information is sent out just completely unencrypted right. uh, without any security put on at uh, the email client end. So you're sending your password out there to right. anybody that wants to uh, sniff it. So one way around that, Mm -hmm. is uh, to use something called VPN or Virtual Private Network. Now, what this mm -hmm. is is basically a service that you, you pay for monthly. Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is you're making a connect, uh, 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 an encryption, encrypted link between your system and their system, almost like you're connecting to your bank. Mm -hmm. And then they're, in turn, passing the data from them out onto the Internet to where you want to go. So if you want to go to Google, you go to them first. It's all encrypted, and then they go out to Google and back mm -hmm. again and that sort of thing. There's a great service that, uh, that I, I recommend. It's called hotspotvpn.com. Mm -hmm. Um, there, they have uh, you know uh, several levels of security, and mm -hmm. you can use this with your Mac. You can use this with a, an XP or a Vista machine as well. Um, and uh, I shouldn't even I might even have a service for Linux users because we, yeah. we have a few of those. You it looks like they have a service here for iPhone as well. From right, they're now service. developing. Yeah, because a lot of gadgets now have Wi-Fi enabled as well. Right. So check out hotspot, hotspotvpn.com, and mm -hmm. they actually have some really useful tools on how to set up your system so that you can use their service. So when you're in a public place you are protected, you have that encrypted link between you and the internet, even right. over wireless. And VPN services are now being made available to you and me through services like Hotspot VPN, but the, the technology as a whole was used beforehand by mm -hmm. corporations right. when, when their employees went out in the field. So if you're working for a bigger company and you're worried about this, maybe you can uh, ask your system administrator That's if you've good. got a VPN service at your company, yeah. and then you can connect back to your company that way. That's good. And you don't have to worry about uh, people sniffing it. Now, I want to do a couple things here. I guess uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about Vista, because Vista has some new, improved network control tools mm -hmm. that will make you more secure. We'll get to that in a minute, because mm -hmm. but first, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, I'm not really exactly sure how you would, what the, the, the term is, but it's, there are ad hoc, ho, ad hoc networks out there, mm -hmm. we'll talk about what that is in a minute, uh, that look like they're free wireless internet access points mm -hmm. that you may want to try to connect to, because it's like, hey, it's free. So let's say you're in an airport and you browse. I'm going to go to my... Uh, wireless browser here for a second. And I'm going to look at all the available SSIDs, right? all the available wireless networks here. And as you can see, there's a few of them here uh, in where we are today. And I want to connect to LabRat. But look up right here below. It says free Wi-Fi access. Mm. Now, you'll notice a couple things here. Number one, the LabRat uh, icon there looks like it's, that's an access point. It means that right. Sean has got a router here that, uh, that I've connected to. Mm -hmm. Down below it, you see kind of a triangular, the triple screen situation. That's an ad hoc network. That means that somebody else uh, has set up their laptop so that you can, so I can connect directly to them, mm -hmm. right? And that's just a, a built-in function of Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Here's this is something that may be useful around the office potentially, but not necessarily out in the field. Right. I mean, let's say that you have uh, a laptop and you're mm -hmm. connected to a wired connection mm -hmm. and I want to get access to that or he has a printer or something. I could mm -hmm. use my Wi-Fi to connect directly to Sean over an ad hoc network and actually uh, borrow your resources if you mm -hmm. let me. You could set up your machine to do that. Right. So herein lies the issue though. Somebody at some point in time has created uh, an ad hoc network in an airport and, say, and called it free Wi-Fi access. So. Somebody you know, came along, sat down, went, oh, wow, free Wi-Fi access. Didn't recognize that it was an ad hoc network. Mm -hmm. Clicked on it. Their computer goes out, tries to connect to this. Fails, right? And all of a sudden now, but what happens is a flaw in Windows where it now takes 
that the existence of that network and it starts to broadcast out uh, like sort of advertising that as free, well. It's free, free, free. It's a flaw on Windows. Right? Instead of saying this is not mine, I can't connect to it, forget it. It hangs on to that and he says, oh no, this is available because mm -hmm. maybe you want to share it to me and I want to share it to somebody else. So what mm -hmm. happens is as soon as you cl click on that thing, your machine becomes, starts spreading that as well, even though it doesn't really exist. Right, exactly. <laughs> You're kind of, a, kind of a zombie about it. So, um, so you'll see these things all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if your machine uh, has this in its list, mm -hmm. it means that you are now part of the problem, not part of the solution. So you're part of the problem. So I am part of the problem because I've got one right here. At some point, I clicked on that in an airport, actually primarily for this demo. But, uh, but I wanted to show you that. Now, here's, here's how you stop that from happening. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure you guys understand how to stop that. So on Vista, here's how we do it. And it's a kind of a geeky um, administrator function. There you go, push your glasses up there. I'm going to click on my start button here, my Windows button here in Vista. And I'm going to type CMD. I'm going to get a command prompt open. Mm -hmm. Before I do that, I'm going to right click and say run as administrator. Because I have to elevate my privileges in Vista, mm -hmm. of course. And I'm going to say yes to my user account control. Yeah, we may not be seeing we that. We may not be seeing that because of uh, the screen cap thing. Um, so now I have a window here. This is my command prompt. And what I want to do to turn off access to ad hoc networks so I don't connect to them ever mm -hmm. is I type net sh space wlan, stay with me here, hmm. add filter space, uh, let's see, permission equals deny all space network type equals ad hoc. Oh, Netsch would land add filter permission equals denial network type equals ad hoc. There you go. Why didn't you say so? It's intuitive, isn't it? Yes. So when I hit that, it says the filter is added. Now it's not possible for my machine. My machine will basically filter out all the ad hoc networks oh. that it detects, and I'm safe from those bogus wireless. Right. I noticed when you did that, uh, something in the background changed. So your, your list right there now says your network administrator has blocked you from connecting to this network. Right. Which you kind of, I just block myself from doing, but absolutely. That's, that's blocking all ad hoc networks. All ad hoc so, networks, so, exactly. So now, if you do connect to an ad hoc network in another port portion of your life, you'll be blocked from that too. That's correct, right? So if you're using ad hoc networks, which most people don't anyway, mm -hmm. um, yeah, then you'll you've turned off that feature, unfortunately. Uh oh. Now you can turn this back on. You can get rid of that filter again mm -hmm. as well. Let me show you how to do that. It's you kind of write, use the same thing except. Hang on a second. Let's see. You're going to type net sh wlan del meaning delete space, filter, I'm going to delete the filter, and then permission, well, let's just type the rest of it. Permission equals deny all, network type equals ad hoc. So basically all I'm doing is the same thing, except instead of, instead of saying add filter, I'm saying del filter, delete uh -huh. filter. Okay. Right. Hit enter, and it says the filter is removed from the system successfully. And now on the other now section back over to there, the one. Yeah, it's allowing you to connect to it again, back if you like. Again, exactly. I think you better delete that. I better delete that, exactly. All right, so that's on Vista. And on, 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 we know that everybody doesn't have Vista yet, mm -hmm. and maybe they never will, <laughs> based on how it's selling at the moment. But So let's, let's, uh, let me show you how to do this on a Windows XP machine. All right, so we so, are here. So you want to go down to the right-hand corner to your system tray. OK. And you want to right-click on the Wi-Fi icon there. OK, so that would be this little one with the little wings on it. Yeah, and you want to go uh, View Available Wireless Networks. Mm -hmm. And on the left-hand side there, in the, it, there is a Change Advanced Settings. See at the bottom there, but under Related Tasks? OK. So, and then you want to click on the Wireless Networks tab. Wireless Networks top tab. Middle. OK. That's it. And then go down to the bottom right to the Advanced button. And then, so now you have, it says, the, the Networks to Access, right? So, so uh, any available network. Yeah. Access point only or computer to computer only, right. which would be the ad hoc. So, you, so what you want to do is, is select access point networks only. Okay, so I'll make it so that we can't connect to the ad hoc. And right, of right. course, we'll hit uh, close. close and OK. Yeah. And now if we want to undo that like we did on there, we would just go back through this process and select uh, either ad hoc or, or, or all. any. Any, okay, so. exactly. So there you go. But that's, a, that's a little bit easier from the looks of it, although going through all of those steps is Still a little well, bit. Uh, you know, Windows is all about clicking, right? It's uh, pretty deep inside the system. Yeah, but so. you don't want to play with uh, that if you're not expecting to. So yeah, you have to know what you're doing. So that's that's a good thing, I guess. Right, right. All right. Um, what else do we want to do? Do we want to cover here before we go to commercial? Maybe we'll go to break. When we'll come back. We'll, uh, we'll wrap up. And if there's any other things we mentioned before we go. All right. Sound good? All right. 
Here's a second message from a sponsor. We'll be right back after this. Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet. Is it A, a pair of sneakers, B, a Jack Russell Terrier, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. I did promise you earlier that uh, I'd show you a couple of interesting new features on the uh, on Windows Vista's uh, networking uh, panels, a new network and sharing center. So let's just have a look at that real quick before we wrap the show. I'm going to right click on my uh, network and sharing center here. I'm going to choose it. Um, and you're going to see a whole bunch of new features here uh, that can customize the whole networking and sharing experience. When you are at a network, uh, when you are at a new public network, you're going to get three options. Mm -hmm. uh, the Vista will detect it and say, do you want this to be home, work, or public? Mm -hmm. So I would choose public location when that dialog comes up. Mm -hmm. Basically, that shuts down all of the dangerous sharing options in public. So if anybody else sees you on that good, open good. Wi wireless network, they can't get at your files or your public stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing you can do if you want to do it manually would be to go down to network discovery here, choose the down arrow and say, turn off network discovery. What that does is basically stops uh, Windows Vista from saying, hey, I'm here, because the hey, I'm here uh, function is designed to make mm -hmm. it easy to share files and to connect with other machines on your home network. But mm -hmm. obviously, you don't want to make that easy for people to do out there on a public network. Right. Um, and you may want to turn off some other stuff, too. There's a couple other options here. There's, you can turn off file sharing, turn off public folder sharing, uh, mm -hmm. printer sharing, of course. Chances are you're not going to have a printer. Oh, maybe, but unlikely yeah. uh, at a public network. Um, and turn off everything, essentially, so mm -hmm. that you are don't give anybody any reason to connect to you and do anything like that. So I just want to point that out. I do cover it in my new book a little bit called the Windows Vista Help Desk, freshly off the presses. I'll allow this. This is the first time this we've the first. taped since it yeah, came out. It is. Actually, it's a lovely book. And Sean did give me a hand in uh, uh, writing this. He did a little bit of research for me. And uh, yes, your name is in the back. I'm in the uh, table. You're in the in index. In the index. And uh, actually in the acknowledgments too. There you go. Yeah, anyway, Windows Vista Help Desk at a bookstore near you. All right. All right. Thank you for that indulgence. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I'm only uh, indulging you because you mentioned that I was in the <laughs> index. <laughs> All, All right. right. Pictures? We have pictures picture again time. this week. It's picture it's time. It. So we'll yeah. start out with our uh, good friend Rob. Who is here with his cat, Ginger? Oh, he's so cute. With yeah. the lab rats. Lab rats in the back. Yay! And the nice, fancy, dancey system right here. Ouch. Beside him as well. That's crazy. That's, that's a big screen and a big computer. Sweet. And a big cat, too. And a big really. cat. Good stuff. All right. So Rob there you go. Ginger. Rob and Ginger. Super. And uh, we also have Adam from Australia. Adam and, from Australia. Yeah, and uh, he, uh, he's a big fan of Windows. He says, Good. Uh, Crab apples to you, Sean. Windows yeah. rules. <laughs> So, and he also got a photograph for us. Yes. Just, you know, showing off just how much he likes Windows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is this Vista Street? Where, Vista where in, Street. This where is in Australia. This is, is in Queensland. Queensland. <laughs> so, there you go. Vista Good Street. Man. And it's that we way. I love you. We love you. Good stuff. Well, that way. That yeah, way. see, it's pointing towards you. That's right, of course. There we go. There you go. Good job. And there we go. Thanks, guys. Thanks for sending those in. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can send your uh, photos to... Feedback at labrats.tv. All right, we well, like to see them. We got lots coming up in future episodes too. Mm -hmm. I know you've got a whole bunch on your hard drive. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, if you haven't seen yours yet, keep an eye on the shows because it'll come it's up coming. sooner or later. It's coming. All right. Well, that's it for us. Um, I think for this episode. That is. My name is Andy Walker. You don't want to push your book again, do you? Hey, why don't you? Will you push my book. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sean Carruthers. Thanks for downloading. We'll see you next time. Are you ready?
it's nice and warm up here. All right, ready to go. It's actually. Hello, my lady. Oh, sorry. Yes. Dude. You. Patty, patty on the head head. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't like that, huh? She doesn't like the quick, jerky oh. movements. Is that just too. Um, yeah, too aggressive. Too aggressive. 